My name is Nuela Cabral. I am an educator and uh, media maker, and I work at the University Community Collaborative where I oversee youth media programming. This principal reached out to us, and he, there was a need in his school. Um, it's a school for boys. He wanted the, school, the boys to know what consent meant before they graduated, because there were some incidents where boys were graduating, going to college, and getting themselves in trouble. What are some words, what words do you think of when you hear the word conscious? If someone is conscious. Go ahead, I'll see you back there. Safe. I was saying aware. Aware? Safe? Yeah. Safe. Anyone else? Awake. Awake? Very simple. Um, voluntary. What, what might it sound like if I'm held partially responsible for something that happens in life? What, what might be an example of that? Like if someone, like if someone was raped and they'll like, say, well, yeah, they raped you, but like, why were you wearing that? Like, something like that. Right. Like, okay, they raped you, but like, maybe you shouldn't have done that either. Right, so you share part of the blame for what happened to you. So in the consent workshop, we teach what consent is. We teach about rape culture. We teach about victim blaming. Um, and we teach these concepts in ways that help young people reflect on their own experiences and also reflect on media and the ways in which those those things show up in their in the media that they're consuming. Here's for a bit more uh, walking speech. So what we're about to do real quick is myself and Kayla are going to read several statements. Um, what we're going to ask is if you agree with the statement that you come to the left side of the room. But if you disagree with the statement, come to the right side, and after that, we'll basically unpack whatever we're discussing and who agrees and disagrees with the stuff. Does that sound clear? That sound good? Yeah. That sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You want to take the first one, Kayla? Okay. Um, agree over here and disagree over here. And if you're unsure, you can stay in the middle, but we'd like you to try and pick a side if you can. Um, most rapes are committed by someone who knows the victim. Agree? Or disagree. Oh, this is a Disagree over there. I heard that's a fact. Listen again, y'all. If y'all agree, come to this side left, and if you disagree, come to the right side. <coughs> Statement is that men are naturally aggressive and cannot control their sexual urges. Agree or disagree? But anybody need me to read it again? Next statement, agree or disagree. If you have sex with someone once, they need to get consent from you the next time. Agree or disagree. If you have sex with someone once, they need to get consent from you the next time. No matter your relationship to them, that's a one night stand, a partner, a friend, a wife, a husband, you can say no at any point in time. Not only is consent sexy, consent is mandatory by law, okay? So if you're on this side, you're all right. I'm going to see if I can get you to come over to our side a little bit later in the conversation. So just have a bit of an open mind and we're going to move on to the next question, okay? So it's okay if you disagree. We're going to keep working through our, uh, our, our ideas. Philadelphia has a lot of poverty. It's a big city with a lot of poverty. And there are a lot of unique challenges young people face here. Um, there are experiences that young people have here in Philly that kids in the suburbs just aren't having. And so our workshop addresses some of those issues. For example, street harassment is something that's very common in Philly. Young people are taking public transportation or walking a lot um, to and from school and they're coming into contact with usually grown men who are predatory sometimes, who are harassing. Um, and our workshop gives young people an opportunity to, to tell these stories and to unpack why is this happening? 
what do we do about it? What do we do about it in the moment? And then what do we do about it afterwards so that we can stop this from happening? Um, what do we do as bystanders when we see it happen? Are we talking to our parents about it or our family members? Um, or are we experiencing these incidents of street harassment and keeping it to ourselves? And is that weighing us down? In our workshops, we want to help young people gain the tools and the, the knowledge they need to make healthy decisions. To make decisions that will keep themselves safe and keep them from harming others. We want, our young, pe we want young people to leave our workshop more aware and more courageous to speak up. Well, let's have a little bit of fat. Um, the, the, fact is that, like, the fact is that studies have indicated that only 2% of all reports Whoa. of rape are false. What percent? Two. two. What percent? Two. two. One more time. Two. two. So this is slightly less than false reporting and all other crimes. So you're more likely to lie about, you know, being jumped, being robbed. Somebody setting your house on fire. You're more likely to lie about that stuff than being than you know than, than being raped. Yes. Yeah. Cause like you know like going to the police and reporting it is like it takes so much courage. You know because like rape culture is so like taboo and like oh like people tend to blame the victim. What were you wearing? Like where you with? Blah blah. You shouldn't have you know drank. You shouldn't have wore this thing. You shouldn't have gave him any like hints. Okay. What we're not saying is that this is something that doesn't happen, this is something that does happen, but what we are saying is it is not easy to get someone charged for this crime. And we're going to talk about all the steps that you have to take in order to prove that a rape has happened, okay? There have also been a lot of times where students will be sharing stories, for example, about their experiences with street harassment which for many of the students we see, it's something very common. It's a daily experience. And so one of the things that has been powerful is seeing these students share their stories and then looking around the room at the ways in which the students or their peers are responding. And so sometimes they're responding with a look of surprise, you know, shock. And sometimes it's like, yeah, I know it. That happened to me too. But, but you, like, you took it into a whole sexual factor, and I don't think it, it went that deep. Like, I don't think it goes that deep if you just trying to holler at a girl. I mean, like, we, you believe differently, but that's just you. There's a lot of people who walk around hollering at a girl with the intention of just having sex with her. So there are three things that in our workshop that we teach um, that we want our participants to know. Um, if someone discloses to them that they've experienced sexual violence, you can tell them, one, I believe you, two, it's not your fault, and three, you're not alone. And those three simple statements are really important because in a rape culture, that's not what's being said. Instead, we're hearing, well, maybe it was your fault. Maybe you provoked the person, right? Maybe you shouldn't have been wearing that. Um, maybe you're lying. Maybe you just want attention. We're teaching young people to, to, question, to question that victim blaming and to instead believe survivors, support them, and affirm them. But consent culture is a culture in which survivors are believed and supported and where consent is understood and normalized. And so what that looks like, it looks like girls not being policed for what they're wearing in school because they're making boys sexually harass them. You know, it means when a student comes forward to disclose that sexual violence happened to them, that teachers and administrators are making sure that they're safe and that they're supported, and that the person, if the person who violated them goes to that school, that they're held accountable. 
and that looks like that could look like different things but for one thing this the person who's impacted by the sexual violence should have a say in what that should look like so we've been going to grades 9th through 12th in the past couple of years um, but what we're finding is that a lot of principals are interested in us coming in for the ninth grade and honestly ninth grade is even too late right but the the point is is that this um, learning about consent really should be um, not just a one-time workshop but it should be something that young people are learning in school from kindergarten through 12th grade. Have you guys seen any other examples of victim blaming in the school system? What about dress code? That's what I was just about to say. Something like something as simple as me like wearing my shoulders out or um well here's a real life example for me. I I went to school, I had a dress on and the dress was down to my knees as the rule says. Actually the rule is it has to be two inches above my knees, but we're not gonna get into it. And I had a sweater on and the cardigan comes up to like midway up my back so you can see my butt. But I can't hide a butt. So I got called to the office. I got called to the office and they were about to send me home because apparently I was causing a distraction in the hallway because everybody was cat calling at me because my butt was out and a dress, even though it was completely covered and it was down to my knees and even it was so apparently it was my fault for wearing the outfit and not the dude's fault for screaming like oh, yo shorty your ass bear this shit from across the hall. Now she's sharing something personal, so that thank you for sharing that. Some of the challenges um, when teaching consent in our in schools is that we just don't have a lot of time. And so a lot of times we'll go into a school and have one hour or an hour and a half and we'll do as much as we can in that one hour and we're not going to change everyone's mind. Um, there's a lot of unlearning that needs to happen uh, in general when you're talking about issues of related to gender and sexuality. Um, but when you're talking about sexual violence, you're talking about power, you're talking about privilege, you're talking about all of these, these intersections. It's a lot. And so we don't reach everyone, but do we prevent rape and sexual assault? I think so. In order for rape culture to exist, all of those things in that pyramid got to be there too. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, like, I think the reason a lot of people joke about it is, like, a lot of people in jail are guilty. So, like, mm -hmm. if he's guilty, he feel like he deserves to be raped. Okay, that's a big, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a big one, right? Mm -hmm. um, Victim blaming. Right. If you if you uh, what do they say if you if you didn't want to get raped then you shouldn't have got booked right that's that's like what might be some barriers that they face some of the things that they might think or some of the things that might be said about them right if they were to go to the police in these situations they might think that they they're not gonna believe them as much as they believe a Caucasian person I guess okay how many black men are incarcerated right now is it y'all think it's a lot or a little bit a lot a lot now, when there has been situations of black women going to police, it's been said a lot of terrible, in these situations, lots of terrible things have been said about them. Traitors, you know, you're just feeding more men into the system. So there have been several times in our workshops where um, a young person will come up to us afterwards and disclose that they've been um, a victim of sexual assault, that they're a survivor. Uh, and that they appreciate us being at this, being there and having this conversation. Sometimes students will come up and tell us this in person. Sometimes they'll write it on our a feedback form. But to hear that, to hear from survivors in the school, to hear that they felt that this workshop was meaningful and impactful, for me, that's always an indication that we're doing something right. We've gotten a lot of great feedback over the years. Um, students often say, this workshop should be a class that everyone has to take. Or they'll say, this workshop should go in every school. One time someone wrote, you guys, sir, you guys caused a big stir in our school in a good way. Something like that. And I'm, I like that. We, we want to cause a stir in a good way. Yeah, we do. We want 
to leave the school, even if we only see one grade, we hope that the conversation has ripple effects so that students in other grades will start having these conversations about consent. So let's get to it. Bill Cosby. All right. I'm going to get to it. Um, this is a quote from Bill Cosby's lawyer, which says, people are willing to say many things in order to get money. I'm hearing yes. So do y'all know how, um, do y'all know how it works when you uh, make a charge against someone in a criminal court? and how that process goes. Take a look. Okay, so so real quick. Um, when you go and you know, you, you say that, okay, this thing happened by this person, and usually depending on what the crime is, you know what I'm saying, a warrant will be filed, filed and so on and so forth. And there's no such thing, right, as easily just going to file a report against someone and saying this happened to me, and then, okay, Eric, and then somebody saying, okay, well, let's write you up a check. That, like, that doesn't happen. Right. So when lawyers like this person go on the news and say that, and um, you know they, they flash her name up there and say she's such and such a lawyer, and if you say that on television, people like you and I who probably don't know how that process works, it's probably gonna be really easy for us to believe that what she that 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 quote is indeed true. How do you prove right. that a rape has occurred? How do you see law and order? Uh, just like an exam, like oh, like body exam. An exam called a rape kit. Um, who pays for that? You do. If the victim pays for that, who pays for the uh, medical bills <laughs> after your rape? Who pays for the the years of counseling after your rape? Um, who pays for transportation to and from the police station to try and file a report? <laughs> the victim. My hope is that the school district in Philadelphia will invest in consent education in a real way. Um, one workshop, as I mentioned before, is not enough. We need there, need, there needs to be ongoing conversations about consent. Do kindergartners need to be talking about sex? No, but they can talk about um, touch and hugs and how you don't have to hug everyone and why you should ask before you hug, those kinds of things. That's part of this conversation, right? If young people are starting to experience street harassment when they're turning 10, then they should probably start having conversations about it when they're 8 or 9. Um, my hope is that the school district takes this issue more seriously and really steps into the movement to end rape culture. Do I think it's possible for there to be a consent culture in school? Yeah, I, I certainly hope so. I think it's going to take a lot of work to create a consent culture in schools and beyond. But yes, I think it's possible. And that's why I do this work.